Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the Savarant Rocket 1TB NVMe 4.0. Now this is the latest generation of NVMe drives, aka the fastest Savarant drive ever made. It comes in 1 and 2 terabyte capacities. Uh, Savarant has furnished me with the 1 terabyte capacity. This retails right now for roughly 200 US dollars. And if you have a motherboard that supports this latest generation of NVMe, then there is a, I would say, significant increase in performance. Now, on the other hand, if you do not have a motherboard that supports uh, the latest gen of NVMe, then you probably are still gonna wanna pick up the previous generation because in terms of pricing, uh, the one terabyte that I purchased here retails for a little over 100 US dollars, whereas the 4.0 version, you're looking at 200 US dollars. That is a promotional price right now. Uh, the two terabyte is 400. Another thing you want to know is that if you uh, decide to pick this up for a compatible motherboard, uh, bear in mind that you may need the optional heatsink that comes at an additional premium. Uh, Sabrent did not furnish me with the heatsink. They had originally told me that they were going to send me both, but I only got the one terabyte drive. I am not complaining, uh, but if your motherboard does not have a built-in heatsink to basically keep this sucker cool, you should probably pick up the Sabrent branded heatsink just in order to make sure that it doesn't burn out. I'm not saying that you can't get by, but uh, in my experience so far, almost all NVMe drives, except for maybe Samsung, tend to run hot, Sabrent included. Uh, that's not a bad thing, it's just something you have to compensate for. Uh, Sabrent did furnish me with this external enclosure for those of you that missed the video covering it. It's very well made, of course, type C, and the throughput is very good. So, is this worth the money? Well, if you have a motherboard that supports it, it likely is. I mean, based on what I've seen so far about its performance, you're looking at a jump from roughly, you know, 3,000 on both read and write up to 5,000 with the fourth gen. Uh, so, that's a pretty big leap. Now, if you are not going to be doing heavy video editing, uh, gaming, uh, things of that nature where load times really matter, that read-write uh, can be the difference on a lot of different things, then by all means, uh, NVMe 3.0 is fantastic. I mean, it's more than enough, but if you're all about bleeding edge, if you want the latest and greatest, that's where, uh, of course, 4.0 really kicks in. So you can see the packaging difference. This is for branding purposes. This way you know exactly which, I mean, they're color coded. You know whether or not you have 4.0 or 3.0. And if you decide to throw this into an enclosure like this, you will be getting a 3.0 speeds, which is still nothing bad. Um, let's be real here. I mean, that's a very good spec in terms of performance, but it's not going to be that should have peeled off clean. Here we go. But it's not going to be up to its potential uh, with its 4.0 spec. So even though that was a peel tab, I'm going to bring the knife back out. I mean, I highly recommend picking this up if you actually have a drive a, or rather a motherboard that can support this drive. On the other hand, if you do not, you're, as I mentioned earlier, better off going with the previous generation. It's half the price. And after all, by the time you get around to building a system that will support this, prices will have likely dropped since this is literally brand new. So we're greeted with unlock the speed. And again, if you have you know, a motherboard that can, you absolutely will. Now in terms of what this actually looks like, very similar, almost identical to the previous generation. Uh, you know, that copper uh, color, on there again to identify that we are dealing with an NVMe 4.0. And I do think that Sabrent does a pretty solid job in terms of making affordable products. I mean, that's what was proven to me. It was my first foray into their NVMEs here with the one terabyte that I purchased. They furnished me eventually with a 256 for this external enclosure, but I ended up just, as I mentioned, purchasing the one terabyte, throwing it in here and I've been very happy with it. I mean, again, build quality on this is fantastic. I mean, it makes my Samsung drives look like they're flimsy. Um, that is the, the T5 uh, series, but it is also longer than the T5 and it does get a little bit warmer. So that's 
part of the reason that I pointed out that you are going to likely want to get the heatsink for this for internal use on your motherboard if your motherboard doesn't already have a heatsink in place for NVMe drives. And even if it does, it may not have enough cooling properties going on to really, uh, I would say, keep this in check. Uh, but overall, from a value perspective, I think much like the other one terabyte uh, drive that you know I've been using, it's really tough to beat Sabrent in this category because when it comes to pricing and performance, they're right there. And uh, of course, I'm going to test this, but everything I've seen does point to this being able to handle that, you know, 5,000, nearly 5,000, both on the read and write side. So if you're coming from something like this and you need that performance difference, you've got it. And uh, is it worth twice the amount of money? That really comes down to each individual user's, uh, you know, actual case. Uh, so for me personally, I'm more than happy right now with you know, 3.0 performance if you have a solid NVMe drive, which I do consider the Rocket to be, especially at its price. I mean, basically impossible to beat the performance here. Uh, if you get something sub 100, I guarantee you your performance is not going, going to be in the same league on the read and write speed. And so here with this new generation, I mean, obviously the thing that is going to hit home with most users is that if you haven't made the transition to NVMe 3.0, and you're ready to make the transition, then I think it absolutely is worth the money because you are getting bleeding edge. You are getting that five gigabyte uh, performance, which is mind numbing. I mean, again, seven times faster than a traditional serial ATA SSD. What else do I need to say? Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.